What's up, gang? You guys are looking at the hero session. You're looking at me through the hero session. And the reason is, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of an update on the uh, camera setup. Went to Jack's camera shop, talked to Craig, talked to the whole gang trying to come up with a good microphone. Found one. The only problem is that microphone costs more than my Hero 5. It was nuts. So, I'm going to be saving my pennies to get a new Rode uh, microphone that has a 220 degree field of pickup. And it's in stereo. It has two microphones that cross one another. And the tips of my fingers are where the receivers are. And they're pointed not straight at you but kind of up at an angle uh, and it's a powered microphone so hopefully sounds I'll be able to dial in even further once I'm able to get that microphone but I'm always looking for you guys but while I was at Jack's I'm a sucker you guys can see here I've got my session mount on top of the Hero 5 mount. Well, you guys are looking at the session, but I got something else that fits in there. It's kind of cool. This is a very bright 800 lumen is on max um, light that has taken the place of the one that I would turn on and it would shut off after about 10-15 seconds. A real pain in the neck. Uh, but this one, here comes the blinding, and that is on low, medium, high, and then it has a strobe function. Strobe is actually 2200 lumen. I'm even seeing spots, and it's in front of me. So this will help with uh, views I moved the cold shoe over to the side of the camera housing so that I've got my microphone here and I don't know if it's going to interfere with the screen when I face it forward or not we'll find out if my little fuzzy bunny gets in the way I wanted to show you guys uh, and let you guys know I am still trying to improve the audio. The video quality is fine, but you know, with the addition of that light, I'm going to have a whole lot better light. And this thing has a runtime of four hours on low. And low should be plenty bright enough. But anyway, another part of this video is I mentioned in the drawing for Clyde that I had to do a video for insurance purposes. Uh, at the same time we're going to go through and see how many 10 millimeter tools I've got. Uh, Dan Bates just did a put a video up on uh, how many 10 millimeter tools you have so I thought well why not we'll go ahead and do that so after I get done doing that you guys tell me how many 10, 10 millimeter tools you have what I'll do is I'll just gather everything up and group everything and do all the 10 millimeter stuff in one shot. 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter on my Honda motorcycles are the two most popular sizes. So, uh, but anyway, that's that. Just wanted to show you guys I'm ever improving or ever attempting to improve uh, my setup. And this is an actual GoPro clamp. And I've had this on the motorcycle and riding down the road with the Hero 5 on there and it's been rock solid this this thing is just it's awesome and you get a good workout opening and closing it too but this is the one that I've been using most often it's got a pretty short neck on it uh, I've got another one that I use that has a longer neck on it for when I'm doing uh, static shots uh, doing repairs and stuff like that where I can snake it down and get it in real good and tight but this one for the most part that's what I've got going on. Um, and everything here is, of course, thanks to you guys and thanks to your views, your likes, your comments uh, on my channel. 
and I'm approaching 8,000 subs. Uh, I'd really like to see 10,000 by year's end. So if you guys can, tell your friends, check me out, see if they enjoy what they see. Uh, you know, let them know that I'm out there working hard to make sure I'm putting out good content for you guys. I know the audio is probably going to suck on this one, but that's because I don't have a microphone hooked up to the little session right now. Uh, and also, the field of view on the, on the session is not as controllable as it is on the Hero 5. Uh, but anyway, ever evolving, ever changing, uh, if you guys want to know, this right here, oops, that right there, Litra Torch, and the uh, model number of it is, I need to register this thing, model number, model number, LT2200, it's 5 volt DC, 1 amp, um, in fact, if I hold it steady enough, you guys with smartphones can shoot that QR code with your smartphone. And some other neat things about this light. I know this is kind of a boring video for gearheads, but another really neat thing about this light is... Let me find something here. Hang on. suppose I could use these. Is it's magnetic. Not only is it magnetic, I didn't have it on there good. It is also waterproof to 30 meters. It is shockproof. It comes with a diffuser that you can wrap around it. Uh, it has two mounting points with a quarter 20. One on the back, one on the front. It also has a uh, belt clip that you can slip on here and put on your belt. Or I could actually clip it to my hat so that I've got light anywhere that I'm looking really really versatile and teeny tiny little one inch cube four hours of eight or four hours of 200 lumen light which is that one uh, three hours of 400 lumen light and two hours of 800 lumen light and then the strobe will last hours and hours and hours and hours and hours because it's I don't really want to I'll just do it real quick. You guys can kind of see. Launch it off. And another neat thing about this is uh, the refresh rate. The pulse width modulation of most LEDs is going to interfere with a lot of your cameras. They've got this figured out uh, to where it should not. Like if I was to point the camera at the TV, because it's an LED backlit TV, you would see pulses. And you see a lot of pulses uh, with people who have LED lights on their vehicles and whatnot. It was the same problem that I had early on with the lights out in the shop, was I was getting a flash. Until I figured the settings out, I was able to change my frame rate to compensate for the pulses that were showing up. But uh, that's enough babble. I'm eight and a half minutes into it. You guys, the insurance thing that I have to do is for all of my tools to make sure that I'm covered well enough. So we're going to get to see almost literally every tool in the shop uh, from the tiniest screwdriver to, you know, big table saw and radial arm saw and, and uh, half inch router, all the woodworking stuff, all of the metalworking stuff, all of the welding stuff, just all of it all the hand tools, all the power tools, the whole nine. Uh, it's going to be a number of videos shot in order to accommodate the entire tool setup that I've got as I've amassed quite a few tools over the course of time. But uh, I know that my tool tours uh, usually do pretty well with you guys so that's what you get to look forward to in the coming days after Thanksgiving. It is Wednesday, November 22nd. We are right now 22 hours and 45 minutes until my dinner happens. Uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, those are my friends to the north that have their own Thanksgiving day. 
I don't know what day it is and I apologize for that but happy holidays for you guys up north as well that's it this is your friendly neighborhood Zippo if you would please click that like button also spread the word to your friends I'm trying to get up to 10,000 subs by the end of the year that would just really make my day that would make my 10 years if I met that at the end of the year so anyway tell your friends guys thanks this is Zippo. I will see you on the next one. Later. I'm out of here.